Good morning. Good morning and welcome to Tulia Friday, Immigration Fridays. Immigration Friday today. And I'm happy to be here and good morning to everyone. My name is Rumbi and I'm from Tulia. As I've explained, uh, Tulia is an organization that provides um, information, advice um, and support for migrants uh, living in the UK. I'm really excited because on Monday it's Valentine's Day and um, I was sitting here just uh, listening to this song. I don't know if um, any of you know it, uh, Valentine's is coming. Um, I can't sing, right? But <laughs> I will definitely share the link um, in, the, in the comments. Valentine is coming uh, and you're sitting at home. You know, that song, uh, it's, there have been so many different versions of it and um, it's just gone round and round for, for a couple of years. So it's Valentine's Day on Monday and February is the month of love. It's the month of relationships where um, everyone's talking about relationships. So one of the things that we do at Tulia is uh, we uh, you may have seen on our page or sometimes I share onto the onto my personal page some of the programs that we run and I remember somebody saying how come you run so many programs for relationship breakdown um, so we run a recovery from divorce and separation course we started this course two years ago and we've run quite a few of them the recovery from divorce and separation course is for migrants whose relationships have broken down for whatever reason. And um, we go through um, the, the, the program. We started a new one last night. And so that program is to empower people and to bring about restoration. Because sometimes when you've lost someone or lost a relationship, there's so much that goes on when relationships don't work out. Uh, it affects the children, it affects your finances, it affects your mental health, your well-being, your self-esteem. It affects so much. And what we saw was in our community in England, there didn't seem to be a lot of support for people going through that. Some of the people who attend our programs tell us there's a lot of judgment, there's a lot of condemnation, there's a lot of ostracization, that people ostracize you because you've made a choice. Uh, to leave um, a relationship that wasn't working and we we don't advocate for for divorce um, we we advocate for healthy relationships and so in doing these programs we're providing a service and help for people who are going through a really tough time and sometimes Valentine's Day brings about feelings of pain feelings of disappointment feelings of being lonely so it's not always a happy time for everyone but today, um, I just want to talk about bringing a spouse and um, importing someone. <laughs> we we'll talk about importing and, uh, and just running through that as a reminder. I think uh, a lot of people know uh, what, what, what the requirements are, but some people don't. And we still have a lot of clients bringing people from all over the world from um, the United States coming to join spouses in England, from Canada, from Australia, from Zimbabwe, from South Africa, from Botswana, Malawi. There's a whole world out there. And with um, social media and with um, all the things that are available, you can um, meet someone from anywhere. And so there's a lot of movement of people um, all over the world and so like now that the world is opening up again we are seeing a lot more applications coming and we also have all the skilled workers who are here now and all the carers so many people who are um, who are coming who are here and um, they also can bring their bays and and their people who know no one wants to be lonely on Valentine's Day and people want to be together and so the world is so big, you know. I think some of the most romantic stories I've ever had to uh, deal with in all my years is of, of people who just find love. And love is a beautiful thing. And, um, and migrate for love. Because you found someone that you love 
and you are willing to move from wherever you're living to come and live with them. So people from America coming to England, um, people from, um, from Zimbabwe, high school sweethearts, you know, people who've met and lost touch and then they reunite. Some people have got married to other people, it didn't work out, and then people reunite. Um, our brand pillars at uh, Tulia are um, educate, empower, and restore. And so, you know, when we run our recovery courses, I'm, I'm, I, I always, I'm such a sucker for love, you know. I've been so blessed to, to fall in love with um, and be married to uh, my childhood sweetheart because we met when we were very young and uh, we've been together for uh, 25 years. We've been married for 25 years next year. So 24 this year, by the grace of God, 25 next year. But we've... Um, known each other since I was 18 and uh, my husband Muchada was a little bit older than me so we've we've gone through many many years together and I'm grateful for um, for, 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 for for love and so I believe in, 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 in love I believe in good relationships and I'm, I'm, I'm my nickname is Cupid because I love matchmaking people I love to see someone and think ah this one will fit with this one so I love doing that so even as we do our recovery courses I think sometimes I'll be thinking yeah, okay, let's match them so um, you know when people and so sometimes you know you make mistakes and you meet, meet up with the wrong person but there's always hope so the, the, the immigration rules are there, you know, to, to make your dreams come true, to bring your spouse over. And I know some people are scared because of other people's bad experiences. And um, they think if I bring someone, what if they leave me when they're here? What if it doesn't work out? What if this happens? So, you know, the immigration rules, are, are they know that. So, you know, before bringing a spouse, what I always say to people when, when they ask for advice, I say, why didn't you try the marriage visitor first? Because there is um, a visa called a marriage visitor visa. So that visa enables your fiance to, to come to the UK for uh, a visit for up to six months. You can get married during that time, but they can also try out life in the UK. They can try it out because many relationships fail because of the pressures of living in this country, the pressures on relationships, the pressures of work. There's so much pressure. It's like a pressure cooker. And if you are not knowing what you're coming to, or if you have expectations of a different type of life, or if you're not too sure, it's good to be able to come as a visitor maybe you pay lobola or or do your traditional wedding and even if you're married you can still come as a marriage visitor and try and see and then make a decision that do i want to uh you know do the spouse visa and do we want to live in england or do we want to go and live in america or do we want to go and live in zimbabwe or do we want to go and live in dubai or do we want to go and live somewhere else so before making that decision there is that marriage visitor visa there's also the fiance visa and i've seen it um you know the i've worked with with people from all over the world and i've seen that some people in their culture they come with the fiance visa especially for young people for young younger people they come on a fiance visa but they don't come and live with you they live maybe with another family and you, you know you're not living together before you're married they 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 try out uh, the country they settle they they nurture that person they allow that person to grow so i've seen it especially with people coming from from india from bangladesh from pakistan sometimes they come in as a fiance and then they live with another family and then they get to integrate into the into into life in the uk so that you're not getting married and starting life in a new environment at the same time because there's two challenges which are so 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 challenging so some people come and try on a fiance visa for six months and then apply for the spouse visa at the end of, of the six months or before but that's another provision that's there and you know instead of being scared of importing um, I think it's good to think it through 
to to really have those conversations about everything um life here manage expectations and really get to know the person because sometimes you'll meet people who met on on social media they chatted on on whatsapp and then go and get married and then come back and come and live here and then the relationship doesn't work because there's expectations there's disappointment and so before making those decisions it's good to give it time to allow yourself to get to know each other a little bit more to allow yourself to understand the environment where you're going to be living and just to you know to to go through those um things so that you can try and manage expectations and manage everything that you're going uh, through so that is one thing that i would say just not to rush because sometimes people rush into marriage rush into applying for the spouse visa to prove a point to people who don't care because sometimes people will be wanting to tick that box of marriage tick that box of this tick that box to people who don't care you know people literally don't lose sleep over what another person is doing they really don't care but a lot of times you can end up in in, a, in an entanglement because of societal pressures because of peer pressure because of expectations that people have and um i know in our in our course um the recovery from divorce course on um one of the the, the weeks um dr justice marisa runs that course not me so sometimes i just listen in and i remember he was saying you know i've got a phd but do you guys actually sit at home and think that he's got a phd do you think do you sit there and think ah, he's got a phd do you ever think about it and we said no we don't think about your phd and we seriously we don't even care about your phd and he was saying exactly so if if, if he had done his phd for people you'll be disappointed because people don't actually care so i think it's so important to take time to get to know each other before applying for a spouse visa a spouse visa is is really um a, a simple way of uh, of bringing someone that you are in love with and that you want to spend the rest of your life with um it's the easiest route um apart from of course the the requirements like you need to earn a certain amount of money so that you need to earn a minimum of eighteen thousand six hundred pounds a year if you've got indefinite leave so the requirements are if you've got indefinite leave if you've got british citizenship so we're talking about people with citizenship indefinite leave eu settlement if you are settled then you can bring you can get married and bring someone and um you you need to earn eighteen thousand six hundred pounds a minimum of that per year you need to be over the age of 18 you need to be um in a relationship so not a sham marriage or a marriage of convenience but um a genuine relationship where you want to live together as husband and wife and your spouse will need to pass the english test and also um the tb test and then they apply for for the visa the visa fees are quite expensive um and it's um i think from the top of my head it's uh, 1560 for the uh, immigration help surcharge and then the actual application itself is 1500 so it's not cheap so before you make decisions about bringing someone there's a cost element to it it's not cheap it's expensive but also you need to be committed and to know um, that you're in it for the long haul the probation period is five years so why there's a probation period is because the home office knew that it's a problem so they said we'll test you it used to be one year then it moved to two and then now it's five because they realized that it could be a problem so after five years you then are able to get indefinite leave to remain and to settle in the uk so that is um, just a, a whistle stop of um, a really quick 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 summary of that there's so many there's a whole appendix fm which talks about the evidence that you need, which talks about a lot of the requirements that you need, but I won't bore you with that. But I, I'm encouraging people, you know, if you're listening to that song that I was talking about at the beginning, that um, 
it's Valentine is coming and you're sitting at home lonely. Um, you know, think about it. There's a whole world out there and there's, there's people in that world and there's someone for everyone. You know, there's someone for you. And um, it's just taking that chance. And sometimes, you know, fear of other people's experiences, fear of the unknown, fear of what will happen will stop you from doing something that could bring you so much joy. Because you, 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 you can meet someone and then say, I ah, know I won't apply for them with my visa because it's my visa. And so I don't want them to come on my visa because um, maybe they'll, they'll run away. But you're cheating yourself. You know, you're cheating yourself because you could be um, getting into a, a good, uh, fulfilling uh, relationship. A lot of people who've come to the diaspora early, we're not getting any younger. We're getting older and older. And it's good to have companions, you know, and um, it's good to be able to, to have someone. So definitely I encourage people to look at that and to see. And then I'm just going to talk about quickly about the, uh, the skilled workers. So with the skilled workers now, uh, you know, who come here to work, um, they can, you know, they're people who are coming for work and they meet someone, you know, it's, it's so exciting. I, I'm so excited about all the, the carers who are coming because it's nice, you know, it's like you are saying, Mawuya, you know, when other people come in our language in Shona, when somebody comes to your house, you say, Mawuya, welcome. And so all the people who are coming recently, like the new arrivals, there's loads of them. And it's exciting because it's new people who have come. And when the new people come, it throws a whole new dynamic in the mix of um, socializing, of meeting people. So, you know, there's people who might be on a, on a skilled work, care worker visa and they meet someone with indefinite leave to remain. They can either stay on their visa uh, as, as, a, as a skilled worker you know working for that for their employee employer or they can switch if they meet someone who's who's um who is um who's settled a british citizen they can switch onto a spouse visa and then that enables them to um to work for different employers to do different jobs but then the counting towards the five years of settlement you have to start again so sometimes it's not an advantage and it's good to be able to look at all the options and know whether it works for you. So you can switch from a, a care visa to a spouse. Also, the, the, the skilled workers can bring their spouses. So some people are coming with their families, which is really exciting. Others are bringing are coming and then bringing in their spouses or going back home and getting married so with a skilled worker visa it's very um it's it's not as complicated as somebody with indefinite leave to remain for you to bring your spouse or ma or partner you have to show that you are either married or you've lived together for two years as husband and wife um and the there's no income requirement your sponsor can actually certify that um, they're going to look after your family as well so you don't have to have money to show that you can support them. If you've been here for 12 months, you also don't have to show money in the bank. But if you are here and your sponsor is not sponsoring you uh, to look after your family, then you have to demonstrate that you have um, a certain amount of money per family member. So for your spouse, uh, it's uh, 285 for your partner, and for children 300 pounds and then 200 for every child following so you need to show that you've got that money to s support them if your sponsor is not certifying that they are looking after them or if you've been here for less than 12 months um so that is um it's really easy so you know when somebody is here working as a skilled worker you are allowed to bring your husband or wife and you're allowed to bring your partner if you've been living together for two years or more, which makes it really um, good as a good option. But one thing I want to warn people, um, I really want to warn anyone who's listening or who's watching this later, please, 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 don't get tempted. If you're a skilled worker and you're watching this or you've got somebody and you're thinking, ah, you know, people who like to to, to do that 
Because if you do that, you know, and have marriages of convenience or sham marriages, I remember um, a season when we had so many people who came to the UK with um, a, a, on a spouse visa for somebody who was on the old work permit. We used to have the old work permits. You know, all, all these things are not new. It, it's been happening since time, you know. There used to be the work permit. Then there was the highly skilled. There's been so many immigration programs over years. But there used to be the work permits for four years at that time. So someone thought, you know, scams. They thought, let's get people to get married to people. So they, you know how it is, they used to do all these things, a marriage certificate, they apply for the visa, you come. But you've never actually met that person. Like they, they, they hadn't even met each other. So now when the four years came, they couldn't find that person for them to apply for indefinite leave to remain. So people were selling them visas. They would just say, just come, I've got a visa for you four years. And then they would put everything together. And we had so many problems now. One, trying to sort out the status for those people because we didn't even know who they were meant to be married to because an agent just did the whole visa and made them pay. They didn't know who they were married to. They didn't have a marriage certificate. They couldn't get divorced. So even when they met the new person they wanted to get married to, you, they were not able now to get married because they were married technically at the home office. And it was such a hor horrible scam because now they couldn't find the people who had done it. They didn't know how to untangle themselves from this mess. Um, so I'm saying, you know what, guys, I, some people think it's clever and uh, it's a good way of just getting people in, but it messes up people's lives. And I've had to try to untangle those things and then get people to get their proper status and then get married to their proper spouses by getting divorced to a person you don't even know. Because the agent will just give you a visa and they've done everything uh, with fake documents. That's a criminal offense. You can end up in prison for that, but also it can end up messing your life. So it's so important not to get roped into things like that. Because there will be people, trust me, who will try and sell those things. But be careful because it never ends well. It, it, it always ends up in an entanglement and it ends up with coming to, to lawyers, to people to say, help us to untangle it. And so I really would say, please stay away from things like that. Um, but if you are in love, get married, you know, and bring your spouses and, uh, and come. It's not easy. Um, it's not easy. It's, it's, it's not, it, no relationships are easy. Relationships whilst you're living in Zim or in South or in wherever are not easy. Relationships living in the UK are not easy. It's never easy. But it's possible through hard work, good communication, learning how to resolve conflict properly, learning what each other's needs are, learning, learning each other, respecting each other, and giving each other that space to grow, to develop, and to discover you know, yourself as well. So there's so many different facets to making relationships work. And um, my husband and I, we, we facilitate some marriage uh, seminars. We do some marriage coaching. Uh, this year, we're not taking on a group because we are we usually have just a group that we run with um, and, and, and support. But we're, we're just taking um, a break this year because our children are writing exams. So we want to be really, really fully present for them. Uh, to be able to support them um, and our eldest is, is graduating from his master's is going into workplace so it's all transition for our three and you know we want to be able to be there um, to support them and give them all the time that they 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 need and the love and support so uh, we're making that a priority but I, I encourage everyone you know to to get help if, if you're struggling in a marriage, regardless of whether you've imported someone, the fact that you, somebody has come from another country, it never gives you the right to control that person. It doesn't give you ownership over that person. It's just a marriage. Rema visa issues, these visas are just periphery issues. It's just a, a paper that obviously allows you to stay in a country that has good and better prospects, right? But your marriage is separate from that. And that's one thing that I always say is the marriage and the visa is two separate issues. 
it's it's if if you're working on your marriage work on your marriage but don't bring in the visa issue because sometimes those issues get entangled and then it becomes control it becomes even abuse uh, and a person just feels like they don't even have a say because they were brought a person um, feels that they were brought so they can't really contribute much and so it's important to to deal with things um as as spouses to say okay you know what's going wrong in our marriage what are our issues and to identify what is what is the issue that we are trying to deal with um you know the issue might be integration because somebody is struggling to integrate into a new community and a new society this world that we live in is it's diff it's different in england to where somebody might be coming from they might come from the u.s where they had a a, a, a job um, in where they've worked all their lives and they're coming here, they're starting again. They might have been working in Zimbabwe as a bank manager uh, with a nice company car, living in a nice house, and here they're coming and they're becoming a carer. They're not used to it. It's difficult to adjust and then it affects the marriage. So it's important to be able to identify okay, what's the issue? Is it you're struggling? What can we do to support you? How can we help you? You know, it's how can we support each other to be able to integrate and to fit into the society that we live in? It's not easy for people to adjust. I remember when I first started doing care, I found it really difficult. I found it so challenging. I couldn't eat for days because I, I just I couldn't get rid of, of smells, of things that I had seen. I found it difficult. Uh, and it obviously affected my relationship. But we had to identify what is it you're struggling with that. Let's help you. What can we do? Okay, let's try and find different jobs. How can we job hunt? Who can we find in your in your sector? What can we do? So we, we, we can, even if somebody is doing something that they don't like, we don't have to just say to them, just do it. You know, everybody else is doing it. We have to try to be able to problem solve and see what options are there what alternatives are there and that's one of the things our brand pillars with uh, tulia we, we we educate we empower and we bring about restoration right and empowerment is also looking at different options and helping people who are migrants as to what other options are there for you what else can you do because there's so many other people who are doing different things different careers um, business um, empowering people through business online business you can work remote with anywhere in the world there's so much out there so when there's a problem with somebody settling in a country maybe a man who has done an office job all his life he's come he's got married his wife is a nurse He's coming and says, you just have to do care. That's not fair. You know, of course, he might have to start by doing a job that he's not qualified for, or which is not his best favorite job. But in that time, one's <laughs> best favorite. I don't know if there's such a word. Ah, best favorite. Anyway, so um, we then help each other to say, okay, what can we do? How can we help you? How can you empower yourself? How can you move on and do something else that suits you? Um, or that you that inspires you that motivates you because people fall into depression They fall into depression because they can't integrate they can't adjust then that affects the relationship Then it's I brought you with my visa. You should be grateful But somebody's depressed Or it's a woman who's who's come from her own corporate job and she's come here to join her husband and um, she's pregnant, she's got kids, and she's trying to juggle and settle. So, you know, there's so many relationship dynamics which are separate from the issue of the visa. So it's, it's not just the fact that you've brought someone, so that's a problem. And um, I remember somebody saying, maybe it's better I just find somebody here. But that same person here, you're going to have the same challenge, different challenges perhaps, not the same, but different challenges. So what am I saying? Because I feel like I'm just going on. I'm saying that relationships are difficult. They need work. It doesn't matter if you bring someone from another country. You still have to work at the relationship. 
you still have to work at the relationship even if you choose to go and live in 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 another in in south africa and say okay i i found the person that i love but i don't want them to come here i don't want them to get advantage from my status so i'm going to go and live in in malawi with them still you're gonna have to work at that relationship because there'll be different challenges so this valentine's day and season that we're in i'm really encouraging people to think about it differently not to allow fear to hold you back to go for your dreams if your dream is that you want to be with someone for the rest of your days go for it you know don't hold back don't shrink back don't settle be courageous and uh, look into it and you know if there's somebody that you love someone that you get along with why not try don't fall for uh, the naysayers and just think it won't work there's so many good stories about people who've uh, fallen in love and come here and you know good news doesn't sell no one wants to hear about good news but everybody wants to hear about the disasters but there's so many good stories of people who are genuinely in love and they're working working through their problems working through the challenges and their relationships are are flourishing uh, and doing really well so don't be discouraged but really go for what you you are aspiring for or hoping for um in the relation in areas of relationships if you need to import import each other and uh you know yeah bring a bring a wife bring a husband um it's 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 good uh to and love is a beautiful thing it's a wonderful thing and often we don't you know when you have good news about about relationships people don't like hearing it people like to hear people going through difficult times but there are so many absolutely amazing love stories and uh, stories of people who are flourishing in their relationships and our course that we do the recovery from divorce is for people who've had a bad relationships and it equips and empowers people to start again um, and the inspiration to do that was from the massive numbers of divorce cases that we deal with uh, Ch child arrangements when there's problems with children so we realize that some of the reasons why relationships fail are communication um, our own issues our own fears our own insecurities um, dealing with in-laws dealing with other relationships uh, and so the program the recovery program covers those things so that next time you don't fall into the same mistakes and our hope always, we are secretly hoping that people will perhaps reunite after they've learnt and, and been given tools of how to deal with some of the issues. But if that doesn't happen, then there's always a fresh start. Life doesn't end when relationships end. Um, it, it, it doesn't end. It's not the end. So our course is uh, it's, it's really powerful and I'm so glad to have teamed up with um, Living the Best Life which is another CIC, and they facilitate that particular program. And I also want to talk about something that we're doing next week on Tuesday. We're talking about um, separating from narcissists. And um, we've got a guest speaker who's coming on, Pamela Maruisa. It's the advert for the webinar is on our page. You do have to sign up on Eventbrite. It's a closed event. We're not streaming it live. So please... Um, yeah, please um, just come in and uh, hear and learn and equip yourself. And once you've learned and identified about this narcissistic traits and things like that, or you yourself, you might be a narcissist, or you might be, be married to one, or you might have been married to one, it then gives you tools next time to identify. I love, again, I love new beginnings. I love uh, happy endings. I love relationships um, working well. I'm just... You know, like I said, my nickname is Cupid, and and you know, so far, and I was I was laughing yesterday. Uh, I was talking to my aunt, and uh, she was I was saying to I can only say this in Shona because in English it doesn't even make sense. I said because another person uh, had a problem, and she was saying to me, you know, you're so extreme in your emotions because when somebody is. Um, getting married again and things are happening and they're happy you you feel as if it's you and then when somebody's facing problems you say hey 
ndikunzwa kutambudzika because you got such i've got really extreme emotions and i really need to learn how to regulate them a bit more to just be balanced but i get so happy when uh, when when things happen and they're good so you know i really really encourage people not to focus on the negative uh, focus on the positive and and do it and i would love someone to say ah i listened to that live and i decided to go for it and um, you know when i look at statistics uh, if we are to do like 25 just a random number entry clearances right entry, entry clearance is applications for spouses we do 25 out of those maybe three end up in divorce uh just from my experience yeah so it's not every one of them that ends up in in breakdown it's only like a small percentage but when we now focus we're focusing on the like we we really magnify it but we don't talk about those other 22 because they're a bit boring um but we talk about the other ones where it didn't go wrong and like i said bad news sells uh and good news doesn't so I want to encourage you this uh, this season of love to go for love. And um, if you've been hurt, you know, sign up to one of our programs, um, find healing, and then try again. You know, there's no there's no harm. A, a righteous man falls down seven times and he gets up again. You know, you can keep fall, you get up again. But the important part is learning why learning what what you've done perhaps to contribute how you can change it how you can change yourself because when you change yourself and then how you can influence others around you and then move on um, and so that's a really important part of, of what we do so uh, i love working um at tulia and i love um d having programs that are holistic so we you know we don't just uh, apply for visas we 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 were able to just provide the whole wraparound um support and uh, i have another story to share today i like to share some of my positive stories uh we we uh made an entry clearance we we had a client who had um a, a woman who had lived here for i think 15 years and she didn't have um, her papers we helped her she got her papers the family came her husband came and the children but it didn't work out as sometimes it doesn't because they had been apart for i think 13 years so she had left husband with the small children and she had struggled to to get her papers here she was doing live in working sending money home but she didn't have papers so we were able to get the papers around um the legacy time i don't know if anyone remembers 2010 11 those days and then the family came we did the reunion for the family they came but it didn't work out for her so she she then we then supported her with the divorce and um child arrangements and we just helped to to, to smooth things over she had a good relationship with her ex but it wasn't working for them then she joined our our program which was which is freedom called freedom uh, which is um, similar to, to recovery from divorce, but it's more of a, of a Christian program. She was able to come to some of our conferences p before COVID. We supported her, helped her to find healing and to forgive, to let go, the disappointment. And, um, you know, she said, ah, Sister Rumbini, I would love to try again. And uh, I said, you know, I just said, oh, okay, you know, just let's keep praying, yeah, so that you get someone. And uh, then I, I, I met a gentleman who um, was single, senior bachelor, and also was looking for, for someone. <laughs> and I said, oh, maybe, you never know. So I said, why didn't you start talking? But this senior bachelor wasn't in, in, uh, in, in England. They were in Africa, in a country in Africa. <laughs> So they started talking and then they met, met a couple of times. And, you know, some of the, 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 the information I'm, I was sharing about getting to know each other, having trials, trying to see what works. Um, it's not fiction. It's not like I'm just talking theory. Like, you know, it, it's the type of thing that when you're helping someone or coaching them, you, you help them through that. Then they were able to, um, to go there and people traveling up and down and trying to see before making the big decision because you know you don't want anyone to just rush and then after covid they decided um, that they were going to get married 
uh, so they got married um, and they they've been married because COVID really showed good ish it's not uh, you know you, you don't want to be closed away from each other and it was something that helped them so it's been now about six months but people are happy you know people are happy it's nice to see people are happy and uh they are just it's, it's amazing and if there's some hitches then you know it's it's good because you can then help on okay no how is how are you guys communicating are you spending time together what are you doing you know you can then build um for that relationship to thrive and fr flourish uh, but it's through relationship so if you if you see that uh, this lady i'm telling you about we've journeyed together for so many years in so many different capacities and so we are then able to to influence um things in their relationship and help them and support them and signpost them and and uh, and give them the help that they need and that's the type of work that we do at tulia um it's it's one person at a time and it's bringing about hope restoration uh, and empowering people and um it's 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 lovely you know it doesn't feel like work it's it, it doesn't feel like work it's it's just a blessing to be able to do that and to help people in that manner and it brings about changes to generations you know i always um encourage myself in the lord and say you know it's it's generational change because when you uh, empower people to find uh, peace in their relationships, even if they're separating, to still be able to communicate well, to still be able to raise children well, to attend graduations together, to attend weddings for your children together, to know how to resolve conflict because we have differences, but it doesn't mean that we have to be fighting each other. That is stuff that is generational because it impacts the children, it impacts the grandchildren, and it brings about such lasting change. So I, I'm honestly so blessed to be able to do that um, as work. Um, and I love it and enjoy it. So yes, so happy Valentine's Day to everyone. If you're thinking about it, if you were a bit unsure, please don't be, uh, don't stay in that place and uh, make some yeah, just make those decisions. Life is short. Enjoy and enjoy each other. I can't wait for next week. I don't know what Mr. B um, has planned uh, for me. I hope. I've planned some stuff for him. But I think the man has to really plan the most, isn't it? He? he has to make more effort. <laughs> so I don't know what he's planned. I hope it's, it's nice and it's exciting. Uh, and it's nice for us to enjoy. Um, have a great weekend and be blessed. Hope you all have um, a wonderful, wonderful weekend. I'm so sorry. I'm only seeing uh, comments on my um, on my um, on my other page, but they um, they, people were saying my sound wasn't great. So I think there was a time when I was talking softly, and so people couldn't hear me. So I'm sorry about that. I, I wasn't seeing those. Uh, those people so yeah all right uh hold on let me just check the 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 the, the comments kathy said i'm digressing a bit of late people are losing money because of these new hca opportunities please help them and give them insight people are taking the english test with the hope of getting a visa you know what um I did do um, I did do a video on this uh, a few weeks back, and so I'll, I'll just address Kathy what you said. It's um, you know what? Yeah, people will lose money. They will lose money um, because maybe they'll think that if I do the English, if I do this, 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 then it's guaranteed that I'm going to get the job, right? But there's no guarantee. No one can guarantee it unless, of course, they're giving you the job themselves. Uh, but if they're not offering you a direct job, then no one can guarantee it. But if you don't do the English test, if you don't prepare, then you won't get the opportunity. So I don't think it's that people are losing money unnecessarily by raising their hopes. I think it's good for people to look into it, to see what's required, to do the tests. If they, you know, what if because you need to have the English, you can't do it without it. 
So if you are able to do it, and then you 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 um you then apply. No one is going to bring it to you on a silver platter unless you're paying. Because you know there are people who are doing that, isn't it? They you know they're charging for that. So unless you're buying your your opportunity, uh, which in itself is another whole kettle of fish, uh, which we're not going to discuss, but it's positioning yourself to be able to to get into that place and to get that visa to come so you will you will lose you will lose money sometimes you will lose um you will lose um your time in doing it but i always say that uh, people have got this herd mentality herd you know like they follow isn't it herd a herd of sheep a herd of cattle, a herd. So people have got a mentality like a herd. That if if John is doing this, then I'm going to follow what John is going to do. I'm not going to think about it. I'm not going to do my own research. People are lazy to read. They're lazy to research. They're lazy to... to even if I post, like, sometimes I'll post information. And then I say read it. You click and you read. People won't read it. So they'll say, what did you write? And I'll say, why, why can't you read it? You know, just read the information. And I'm talking about people who can read because, you know, there are some people who cannot read, but there are people who can read. People have got data because they can spend time on Facebook so they can have the data to research on the internet. It's a choice. So sometimes because they're not um, themselves also checking out and seeing there's a lady called Popo. Uh, she does a she did she's got a YouTube channel, and I was watching her live her video that she posted a couple of days ago, where she literally phoned organisations in the UK looking for people who are sponsoring HCAs. She she phoned them to check who's got vacancies, what are their requirements, so that she could share it on her YouTube channel to people. I'll share the link, and I thought that was just so good of her, and. Um, if people are following that information, then following it up and chasing. So there's no easy way. Um, but you have to spend some money on yourself to one, get a passport. Two, do your English test. Three, get your police clearance. If you're doing a Red Cross course or whatever course you're doing to equip yourself, or it's St. John's or an online course, you're going to invest time, you're going to invest money. To be able to be in a position to take advantage of the opportunity when it comes so i wouldn't say that people are losing money by hoping that they can come here on this hca visas no um but maybe people are losing money when they are allowing scammers to scam them um they are allowing people to sell them a dream that doesn't come true because they are always people who scam people always and this is a wonderful opportunity for Matsotsi because people will create lies they'll say I they'll go and say I'm, I'm recruiting when they're not recruiting uh, but there are many recruiters out there there are many people who have got agencies who are recruiting so the opportunity is there it's not a lie but then it's for people to obviously to check and to verify to ask relatives who are here to even check on social media and say can you verify this for me and take a risk so uh i hope that answers the question that you had kathy because it's yeah it's a real uh it's a real issue and they should take the english test they should try i, I wouldn't say don't do it uh but do what you've got to do but then also um do your own due diligence read check look for information there's so many groups which are sharing information, sharing adverts, sharing things. So you've got to be diligent and also be doing it yourself. So if someone says to you, I'm charging you for putting your CV together, for helping you to do things, and then you look for the job yourself, that's not stealing, is it? No. Because they're spending their time helping you to get ready, isn't it? But it's just important for them to say, what I'm doing is helping you to get ready so that you can take advantage of it but where they're saying give me 100 pounds and i guarantee you a job then maybe that's different so it's good to understand what is the person offering check and see um 
and you know what's available uh are they telling the truth go on youtube listen on youtube join groups and then just check to see if it's true and if um it's um it's genuine do your own due diligence check for yourself um but obviously by doing the the tests and everything it's not that your your money is being you know you're not being tricked you do have to have the test because if you don't even have the test you can't even apply when the opportunity comes you won't have it but i know definitely there's so many uh recruiters so many agencies so many people but it's just checking and making sure that you're not getting yourself into a dangerous situation as well where you're not being paid uh where you you are brought here and then you're made so you know not even talking about people from um our own um my own country i come from zim but there are people who are trafficked here from all over the world um and we see real cases of of modern day slavery where people are brought here they're told don't pay a thing we're going to give you a job come and it's a fake company when they come here they're made to work in prostitution they're made to work uh, as domestic uh, ser serv servitude like working uh, or in factories um, and so even in, in care jobs you find people who can and most of the people that we see who are trafficked are not really from Africa but from Asia from Vietnam there's people who are brought here and that's a crime and it's horrible but it happens so definitely there's people who are real real criminals out there uh, but with with um, you know HCA recruitment it's easy to check you can check on the home office website that is this person registered to take on people yes they are is this person a real company check on company's house you know the information is readily available um, are they registered with the CQC who's governing them are they a real company and make those checks and then um, you know if you are helping your relatives then definitely do the check just you know checking on companies house you can find out so much information about companies and about people um, and CQC you can check as well and home office website so those people who are um, you know in in Africa if they've got relatives here then uh, definitely they can help them but I know I've got uh, quite a few clients that we we registered for a sponsorship license who've who've recruited who are recruiting who are bringing people so definitely the opportunities are there and I will always share anything that I see which I check out to be real I will, I will share it um, and so they should take take advantage of that then there's other people who do other different things where they they recruit for others but yeah definitely just um just check that out yeah uh, i hope that answered your question uh kathy uh thank you yeah so that's great i think I, i'm i'm done now i've been here for about 53 minutes which is a long time i've just got an, an appointment that i'm doing at at 11 so i'm gonna jump off now please share this video uh, please um like and um see you next friday have a wonderful wonderful weekend be blessed everyone thank you so much goodbye